Are you excited then? Start of a new yeah. season? Yeah, it's good. Before? I think Rotherham got me excited, you know, when the fans, the first time I saw the fans away from home and, uh, you know, I think we saw, it was somebody told me yesterday, we sold the Fulham tickets in four minutes. So it's, uh, I think everybody's excited really. It's, you know, it's a difficult game, but I think it's, you know, I think um, all the players are looking forward to it and I'm sure the fans are. Yeah, it was, um, you've got a big gap to bridge, haven't you, from where you finished last season to the playoffs of, of 13 points. Do you, do you think that's that's relevant when you look at the, what, you know, what the, the challenges this season? That I don't know. I mean, all we've got to do is try the best we can. You know, I mean, you see the book is, we are mid-table just below in, at times, but so it's, it's a matter of, of just, um, I want us to enjoy it. I want everybody at the club to enjoy it. I want fans to enjoy coming to the games and, and going home talking about it. And, and the boys are a good group of boys. And, you know, we, um, you know, if we can just finish the squad numbers off in the next couple of weeks, um, then there's no reason why we don't compete with anybody in the, in the league. Um, you know, I think it's obvious that the, the, the lads coming down from the Premiership and teams like Bournemouth, um, are going to be, you know, the difficult ones. But I think every, everywhere else, we've, you know, we've got as good a chance as anybody. And it is obviously a tough start. Second season running, you've got a trip to, to one of the relegated teams. Are, are you expecting Fulham to be right up there come the end? Yeah, I think I think of the three teams, I probably fancy Fulham more than anybody, any of the others, really, with the squad they've got. You know, they've not lost... They've lost the loan ease and everything, but um, they've kept the, the nucleus of the squad. It's a, you know, it's a decent squad, but hey, we've got a decent squad, so uh, you know that's uh, it'll be difficult for Fulham. It got a bit more decent yesterday, didn't it? Finally unveiling um, Martin Pierre. What, what's first of all, how, how pleased are you that that deal is finally done? Because it, it, it well, it was you say finally done. We still haven't got international clearance, <laughs> so we're still you know waiting on international clearance, which we hope uh, we can get this morning. Um, but he's a, he's a you know he's a lad we've looked at for you know for quite a long time really. Uh, I spoke to him a couple of times and uh, he was you know he seemed a really nice lad and I think he'll fit in well. What's he going to bring to, to the team? I mean, we've seen the little video that, that was put out, but what, what do you think he'll bring to the club? I think it's, it's just his enthusiasm and he's got a great touch, both feet, um, you know, and and it, it just gives us a little bit more, a little bit more quality in that area. Really, we've got a lot of lads very similar, work hard and, and, and do a job. Um, but sometimes you need somebody just to unlock the door. Uh, and, you know, I think Martin's got that in his locker. You talked about the squad, obviously, having been pretty decent and you're still hoping to add to it, obviously. Are you close to getting any more reinforcements in? Um, <laughs> Is there anything happening there? No, there's nothing nothing that's going to knock the doors down at the minute. You know, we, we're working behind the scenes to make sure the numbers are a better um, you know we're struggling left side at the moment I think everybody knows that so we are working on that and uh, I think you know now now Neil's home um, I think we concentrate on on sort of getting the players that we want just to finish the squad off Speaking of the left, uh, left side how's Mark Bowler is he is he back fit enough to be involved? Uh, well he's going to do some training this morning so but he, he's not played any minutes at the minute so you know, it's asking a lot, but you don't know with, with, with Bowles. I think we'll just have to play it by ear on that. He's a he's a genuine lad. And one of the signings that we haven't seen because he's been injured is, is Sammy Amiobi. How? Well, what what is the situation with Sammy? How serious is his problem? Um, well, he's got a, a problem with the knee. Uh, not the bad knee that he had, but he's got a problem with the knee, and it <coughs> uh, keeps flaring up. And at the moment, it doesn't look like that we can stop it from flaring up. So. Uh, it doesn't. I don't think it's any nearer to being fit than he was three weeks ago. It must be hugely frustrating when you bring a player in and just want to see him get get on with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is deeply. Um, speaking of, of, of signing, um, Kieran Scott, um, it appears is, is Middlesbrough's new sporting director. How will that affect the way you work? How will it work? Well, obviously, I don't know. We, 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 we've not had one before as such. Um, I think the club, you know, looking to the future has got... I think it's a good idea, me, to, to have somebody in charge of that department. Um, and by all accounts, from what I can tell, I've heard, he's a, he's a good bloke and uh, I'll get on well with him. So I'm sure he'll, he'll, he'll uh, look forward to working with me. Yes, I know everybody will be speculating. I had a joke yesterday that no doubt we'll get an Austrian or a German manager next. Um, but that's the prerogative, isn't it, of the club? They've got to look at what's the best for the club. 
Um, and at this moment in time, that's what Steve thinks you know is the right way to go. Would it be the first? I mean, in your long and varied career, would this be the first time you've had such a working arrangement? Then um, I would imagine so. I can't remember really, but at every club. You've got people who sort of take that responsibility on like that, are you? Whether it's the chief exec or director or anybody, you know, there's always somebody at the club. Um, so, but I think um, I think that's the way the game's going at the moment. There's, there's so many things to do and so many different angles, and everybody's looking for the the nugget, um, you know. And it, it it just seems that this is way the way to, uh, clubs are going. And just lastly, um, ahead of this weekend, how just how difficult a division do you think this will be, or how competitive a race do you think this will be this year? Because every year, you know, people look and go, oh, it's one of the strongest championships for years, or this one's a bit weaker. What does this one look like to you? Yeah, one of the strongest. <laughs> I think one of the strongest for quite a while. Um, but listen, I said that every year. I mean, you go through the fixture and you think, is, is that a good run of fixtures? But how can you tell? You know, it's the... Sometimes it's the worst run of fi- e- the easiest fixtures that undo you. So it's uh, I- I've got past that now. With it, I think every game's difficult, and we just have to be ready for every game to be prepared as best we can, and uh, and try and improve the squad in the next three weeks and give us options that we've not got at the moment. Um, hope that we don't get any injuries in the next few weeks till we till we get a few in, and um, and and just give it our best shot and enjoy it. Like I say, we've got to enjoy it. I mean. Youngsters have got. I've got to enjoy it because at my age, you've got, I've got to enjoy every minute, and uh, I want the the fans and the players to do the same. Great. Well, good luck at the weekend and for the season. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who's Dawn? Dawn, where are you, Dawn? Oh yeah, I've got Hello, you. Neil. Hi, How Dawn. You? Hi, love. Hello. Have you have you had a good summer? It's been all right, actually. Yes, I had a nice a nice few weeks relaxing. I've not done that for a, almost a couple of years now. Really, we've not had time, have we? And what you've made of the um, the preseason so far? I think it's been a good a good preseason, really. We, we've got over what we wanted to do. We've mi- we've had a mixed in with the fans as well, and I mean they must all be. I haven't had many letters in yet, but I'm sure I'll get thousands of letters in from the fans that went to Cornwall thanking me for that week's weather. <laughs> uh, couldn't have got a better week's weather, could they, in Cornwall than we had that week? Absolutely. Um, are you as excited by the signing of Martin Payero as, as the fans seem to be? Yeah, quite right. I mean, I, I took a lad called uh, a, a, a lad from uh, from Spain when I was in Cardiff, uh, Camarasa, and he, he was very similar to Martin, same sort of build and everything, and he just give us something different. And uh, they are that type of, of lads where you know you, you, their ability comes through and. And it, it is it is exciting, and you, you you know you just don't find them. I I couldn't I couldn't put my hand on a on somebody in England that could do what Martin does. So you know it's great it's great to have him in the club, and I'm sure the lads will like him because he's he's such a he's such a nice lad. And he takes set pieces as well, which could come in handy uh, this season. Yeah, because poor old Paddy, the only thing he didn't do were goal kicks, I think, last year. And we thought about that at one stage. So do you think, or I suppose you're hoping at least, that you're going to have more strength in depth this season? Because there were times when the squad was really quite thin, wasn't it, last last season? Yeah, I mean, we are. I mean, we like I said, we only had 14 players the other day training. But I think it's just one of those things. I don't think we've got to moan about anything. Like, I've just got to get on with it. And I think the lads who come in, we've just got to... We've got to try and get enough options so that when we do get injuries, we have got proper people to put in proper places. So we are just short of probably another two players, a left sider and another striker. Um, but other than that, I've, I've been I've been really pleased at how the lads are. They got fitter and fitter, and we've got one or two lads back from injuries. We've we've treated them really careful. Uh, they've worked hard. You know, your Dale Fry and your your Tavo's got a little knock, but he's you know he's he's not far away. His Tav. Um, he always tells me he's fit, whether he's injured or not. So I've got to be a little bit extra careful with him. But people like you know Dale and Dick Steele, who were out last year, and Bowler, who had an earlier, just got to be a little bit careful. Um, that's why it's nice to have options, and and it's nice to have one or two um, experienced lads in the dressing room, really, as well. You know, because I think that can only help us that. And obviously, there were times last season when you know goals goals were a problem. Um, you don't want to be in that 
same situation again. Are you confident that you will be able to bring another striker in? Um, yeah, I think uh, I think we, you know, we, 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 everybody knows it's been in the paper that we've been, you know, we're looking at the Brazilian. I don't, you know, who it looks, it looks like that's not, not going to happen. So, you know, I think that we just got to keep looking and not worry too much and just, just get on with it. Um, you know, we, 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 we probably lost out on on the odd striker by waiting, um, but you know that was my decision really to hang to see if we could get the lad. Um, and and now we still need another option, you know, because we are thin when we get injuries, and uh, and uh, and and we can't, you know, we just can't do with the numbers that we've got up front. We we will need an option, although I have got Matt Crooks who can help me out in that area as well if I need to. Um, we know that that Sol Bamba has been training with you up at, at Rockcliffe. What's the situation with him? Because the speculation that he may sign a short-term deal as a player, stroke coach. Well, I think I mean you've only got, I think you've only got to look at him when he played against Rotherham, and I think our lads thought he was outstanding against Rotherham. Um, it's just a, it, you know, he's such a keen lad, and when we went to Cornwall, he actually helped uh, Craig Little with the under twenty threes and eighteens, and he was very, very good. They were very impressed with him. Um, that's where I see him as a role long term. I think he's an excellent coach with the youngsters, um, always giving advice, never shuts up. Um, you know, so I think it's a, a, an opportunity for him. And if he can contribute on the field of play, then you know we've got to think about that because um, you know it does give us another option. You know, for example, when when uh, I took Grant and, and, and Dale off, he slotted in. Um, well, Grant came up and he slotted in at centre half, and did really, really well for me at Rotherham, which was an awkward, an awkward game. But in a way, that that helped me look at him because I never thought he'd get back to this kind of fitness, if I'm honest. Um, when I was at Cardiff and and the problems that he had, but all credit to him, he's he's, been, he's done remarkably well in the by working hard and overcoming things. And I think he's got things to prove. I think he was probably a little bit disappointed to leave Cardiff. And I think he's got something to prove now, you know. So, uh, you know, we, we just play it by ear at the moment. But he's definitely going to be part of the Borough setup this season. He will be, yes, in some capacity. Unless he, unless he goes somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You never know, do you? No. Um, so you were talking about um, how you sold out your allocation of, of tickets for, for Fulham in four minutes. That just shows how desperate the fans are, doesn't it, to, to get back to seeing the football properly again. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's, um, I mean, I seem to have been here years and I've never never had fans behind. Until Rotherham, I've never witnessed our fans, really. And uh, I mean, at Rotherham, I couldn't believe how, the noise they made. And I think they were 1,500, something like that. Um, but it just whets the appetite, doesn't it? You know, I'd like to see 25,000 here, you know, at Middlesbrough and full houses away from home because they do make a difference away from home. It's a, it's a great atmosphere when they're all together. And, um, and you know, they've been waiting a long time to, to get behind the team again. And, and, and we you know, we've managed to... It has changed quite a lot since they came last. And, and we've got to try and give them something to cheer about now. And just going back to Saul, um, just for a second, uh, I think it was Sam Morsi who said that he's just brilliant in the dressing room. He's given the players a huge boost. Yeah, I think I think because I think he's probably Sam's minder. That's why he's saying that. <laughs> yeah. You know, little Sam needs a big lad alongside him, um, so he's probably just saying that to keep in his good books. Uh, <laughs> That's but, all from me, Neil. Uh, very good luck at the weekend. Thank you very much, Simon. Hi Neil, how you doing? Where is, oh, I've got him here. Yeah, hi Simon. Um, just picking up on the fans' idea there. Um, how much are you just looking forward to the, the idea that, that it's going to feel a bit more like football as you know it, as we know it, with with state, full stadiums, with a bit of stick flying around, with that. Kind yeah, of thing? I think I just think we need it. I mean, I, you know, when I read today about Messi, for example, I mean Messi shouldn't be leaving Barcelona without the without the fans saying goodbye to him I mean I just thought well, how can that happen you know because he deserves to be applauded like with his fans who you know he's been an absolute unbelievable player and I, and I think to a lesser extent that's how I feel I feel that I, we need fans I need fans to shout at me and then to cheer with me when we do well and 
the ups and the downs, and, and that's what football's all about. And we've all missed that. I mean, mentally, it's been it's been a the pandemic's been a real bad time for a lot of people. And yeah, all right, I, I do get the the other side of the coins where they want to vent their anger at me because I don't know what I'm doing and what be. But you've you've just got to just accept that. I'm afraid it it gets that out of the system, and it's a it's a it's a healthy situation. I'm not sure about the social media things, but you know, in general, I think it's it's just great for the fans to be planning coming to the ground and and seeing the mates and sit next to this one or him in front always standing up and blocking me views on you know and tell a steward and all these complaints and things. So it's I think it's good. I just think it's great to have them have them back and uh, more like football as we known it really. Um, just another thought about the championship. People always say it's like the tightest league in the world, but you, you look this year and there's been teams dealing with transfer embargoes on one hand, and on the other hand, you've got Fulham spending £12 million on a player. Um, it, it seems very diverse in terms of resources this season. Well, I think when you come down from the Premiership, you know you've got, you know, uh, and I think as, the last few years, or last, last year in particular, the teams that kept the team intact and spent and invested... <laughs> in the championship were straight back up. So I think Fulham are just saying, you know, that, that I mean, they they bought to one or two, haven't they, really? You know, they, they bought the lad Wilson from Cardiff, who was very, very good. We you know we asked about him, but, um, you know, they I think they paid 12 million for him, didn't they? Um, and then you, they're looking at the Brazilian forward who we've been after and, and uh, I think somebody's tapping our phones, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, final one, really. Um, last last preseason, I think just because of circumstance, was a, was a bit sort of squashed. D- does it feel better this time? Do you feel that everyone's a bit more ready going into this? Well, I just think with the fans, it's it's getting back to normal. I think this is how you should feel. Everybody thinks at this stage that your team could have that fabulous season um, and get promotion, and the grass is always lovely and green and. You know, you, you, everybody's got to be optimistic, and that's what football gives you, and especially in the championship, because you know the bottom team beats the top team every every other week. So it, there's no divine right, and we're looking forward. I, I always like it when we're not favourites, and we're not. You know, we I think we we're, we're better when we're a little bit underdogs, um, because we've got that type of lad in in the club. Um, but like I say, we've got a decent team, um, one or two lads who could play higher as well, and they've got a. You know they've got to show what they can do, and we've got to all get together and try and make up for uh, individual quality with the teamwork. I think that's our best strength. Uh, we've got a decent team, and um, I think the you know the dressing room spirit's got to take us as far as it can.